All right, there's, there's a story like this about a school teacher in Germany. It's a very German story. He set up the telescope so the kids could look through the telescope and see the moon up there, okay? So they're out there at night, and uh, the first kid comes through and says, uh, gosh, I don't, no, no, this is how it goes. So they all dutifully look through the, through the lens piece down there, through the microscope up there. And I think the first one says, uh, oh no, I can't, I can't see anything. The schoolmaster says, oh, you dumb height, you have to turn the knobs and then you'll see it. So the kid turned the knobs and said, oh yeah, yeah, I see it. So then they all went through until they got to the class dunce. <clears throat> one of those, there's one in every class. And the class dunce said, I can't see anything. What are you talking about? So the teacher knocks him out of the way, looks through the piece there, and then looks up on top and realized he hadn't removed the lens cap. <laughs> so none of the kids actually saw anything. They just, they just got the message that they should better say yes. So I'm glad the lens cap is not on, right? No, you can see? Right, okay, good. I can hear too. <clears throat> okay, please join me for a moment of silent prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for this moment together. We thank you for this moment of peace. We thank you for the sunshine and the sound of the wind in the trees, even the sound of distant traffic. For we know that your spirit is moving through us. We know that your, that your courage, that your power, that your love is sustaining us and sustaining all communities in this terrible time. We ask that you hear attentively the prayers that we have raised for our firefighters, for victims of disease, for all the people that need your help the most. Help us to be your agents of peace and healing. Help us to be your agents on this earth to work to do all the healing work that we may do. In this time, we pray for our elected leaders and all those who serve us in public office. May they serve us with wisdom and justice tempered with mercy. We pray for our sister churches in the United Church of Christ, both in this state and around the world. And we pray especially for all religious congregations that are persecuted <clears throat> for their for their belief's sake. Lord, give us strength, give us courage. Help us to change the things that we can change. Help us to accept the things that we cannot change. And give us the courage and wisdom to know the difference. And finally, we pray as you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please? Our first reading this morning, our Old Testament lesson, comes from Exodus 16, verses 2 to 3 and 9 to 15. We have left Joseph behind as of last week, and we're going to talk about Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, 
if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, whales came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our New Testament lesson for this morning is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. <clears throat> it's the famous parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And he went out again about noon. At about three o'clock, he did the same. At about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. I could shed some more. <laughs>
Okay, in today's scriptures, <clears throat> we heard in the psalm, he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. Yet we also heard the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Were the people glad to leave Egypt? Yes. Did they complain all the way to the promised land? Well, they complained a lot. So it is with life and its many choices. Today, we, all of us on this planet, are on a journey not of our own choosing, a journey through the tribulations of a plague. A plague is what ancient peoples would have called this dreadful flu. There have been many plagues throughout history. People did not know what caused them and often interpreted a plague of locusts or a plague of fires or a plague of disease as a punishment from God or gods or various gods and various goddesses and they flogged themselves and did all sorts of awful things in order to appease these unseen and wrathful divinities. We don't believe in these wrathful divinities anymore, and we don't flog ourselves, but that does not make this particular time we are living through a lot more bearable. It is one thing to make a choice and endure the consequences. <coughs> Quite another to have something inflicted upon us <coughs> for no apparent reason, other than that viruses, say, are just part of life on the planet, and every now and then a virulent strain somehow gets loose, and we have to make big changes in our lives in order to deal with it. By the way, did you know that there are two theories floating around about viruses and how they came about? One is that viruses were the first form of life, that these not really alive packages of DNA just sat around for a while, like a long time, a really, really long time, and then somehow, no one knows how, bacteria somehow put the DNA together and emerged as living creatures from this soup of genetic material. <clears throat> I hope that sounds sort of antiseptic and very clean <laughs> and scientific. It, it's not a very nice, it's not, you can't really do much with that explanation, it's just the way it is, sort of a mechanical explanation. But the other theory is really creepy. Okay, now, now the sermon gets fun. That instead of viruses being the first things to appear on Earth and that led to the evolution of life, they are actually quite the opposite. They're one of the last things to have appeared on the planet. That viruses did not evolve, they devolved they are broken down bits of the DNA of various bacteria that started just misfiring, messing up, breaking down for some reason or another. Okay, so they're the detritus, if you will, of the first living processes. Which means, use your imagination now, Viruses are things that were once alive, but now are not. Sort of like the living dead, or vampires of horror shows. <clears throat> they are cold, dead things that need the warm blood of something living 
in order to reproduce. Or, worse yet, something akin to the fallen angels of the Bible, creatures who once worshipped the living God and contributed to the evolution of life, but which now roam the earth seeking to waylay humans on their life's journey and pull them down to hell to join them in their misery. <coughs> Ick. Yeah. Ick. Well, wherever viruses come from, we need to stay away from them because they can make our life's journey really, really unpleasant and really give us reason to complain. Having the flu, even just the ordinary garden variety flu, is no fun. Now, both stories today from the Old Testament and the New are about complaining. In the Old Testament story, people complained because they were starving. In the New Testament story, the famous parable of the laborers in the vineyard, people complain because others are getting paid as much as they are for doing less work. In the first case, people are anxious about survival, <coughs> and they're complaining, as well they should. In the second, they are simply envious because God gave generously to others, or the landowner gave generously to others. So getting theological, in one case, people complain because God provides too little. In the other case, because God provides too much. So isn't that just human nature, that we are all like baby bear, we want everything to be just right. It seems fitting, <clears throat> it seems fitting then, that in the first case, God provides some relief, manna in the wilderness. Doesn't sound very tasty, but something. While in the second, the vineyard owner, representing God, obviously, basically just tells the envious people to mind their own business. The envious ones, at least, are not starving, so we might say in contemporary parlance that their concern is a first world concern. They have the basics, and so they are concerned about fairness. In the first story, the Israelites do not have the basics. They have risked all. They have left security, they're living out of tents, and they've run out of food. So if, we're, if we are feeling sympathetic this morning, we could say that both sets of people certainly have something legitimate to complain about, but the starving ones certainly had a bit more. So what are we to make of these stories today? What conclusion can we draw? Obviously that life is difficult, and sometimes we pray God for relief, and God sometimes answers some better than others. Well, why isn't God more fair? Why isn't life more fair? If you're at all like me, it seems like every day I hear so many complaints <coughs> about so much unfairness and so much else that I cannot listen anymore. But why isn't life fair? Why are not pain and suffering and wealth and opportunity more evenly distributed? <clears throat> I'm afraid there is no answer. But there is a response. And the response is to focus on the fact that we, all of us are on a journey together. Our purpose is not just to save ourselves individually, to right our individual wrongs, to make sure that we get a fair share. That is a valid concern, but we're here for a higher purpose, to bear each other's burdens as best we can, and of course, to share in each other's triumphs. We Christians are a great people. We do not dwell on the negative. 
we get over things. We have a bright future in front of us. We are going through a very tough time now, but remember, whether we win or whether we lose, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. We are God's agents to do God's work on earth. Amen. <coughs> Okay, now's the time for the sharing of joys and announcements. <clears throat> In case we get carried away um, and I forget, um, someone remind me that I have a special announcement. Okay. Which will come last? Um, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was, I asked you to pray for a young cousin of ours who had been tested positive for COVID. And I am happy to say that he had a very mild case. He had a cough. He lost his sense of taste and smell, and he had aching arms, but he has now recovered, and um, he lived in the basement of the house. He and his mother traveled in the car together six hours side by side back from the college, wearing masks the whole way, and the dad of the family says, I don't care what anybody else says, masks work. So that they both made it home safely and the yes. COVID has not spread to any other family yeah. members. Uh, right. She's had three negative tests as mother. Excellent. Good, yeah. Um, I looked up the figures the other day. Um, there's a breakdown. You could, you could break down the whole state of Maine by zip code. So in our zip code, there have been, last time I looked, 31 cases total. That's cumulative. That's very good news. That means current cases, five or ten maybe, but there's, that is no reason to be overconfident. We need to be vigilant. We don't want a Millinocket. <laughs> we don't want a Millinocket situation here. If you haven't heard about the Millinocket situation, that was a wedding a joyful affair and over 150 people have been traced back to that wedding and three deaths so we don't want that in our town or our congregation <laughs> we need to continue being careful that's why on our special altar here for today we've put hand sanitizer a bible and some and some flowers <laughs> this is our new our new still life Uh, next week we will be here again. You're, you're next. We'll be we'll be outside again. The uh, weather report is very good. It's supposed to be about the same as today, even warmer. So we'll certainly be here again. We're strategizing how and when we will move into the sanctuary. If you have any concerns, ideas, <clears throat> talk to Sue Pollard, the lead deacon. Talk to our Linda Anderson right here. Anyone on the Board of Trustees, talk to me. Um, I'd like to know if you're planning to come or not. If you don't want to worship inside, you're just, that's fine. But if you um, are thinking of coming and have some concerns, please express them. Um, we might possibly take a Sunday off to make sure we've got this planned out 
properly and have gotten plenty of input from men, everybody. That means we will continue filming. We're going to continue filming throughout the fall, wherever we worship. But we might take a Sunday where we just put the service on video and take that week to make sure we've got the decks cleared, we've heard from everybody, and we know what we're doing. That's just we might, okay? I'm just... Yes? I wanted to say, um, I know I said it in the e-news, but thanks to everyone and everyone who donated to my walk to end Alzheimer's on Saturday. So um, I just wanted to thank everyone again for supporting me, and um, I'm excited to do it. I'll probably walk uh, with the kids because my head's grill. So I'm trying to do some sort of video or something to show the walk along. I have the app on my phone and they have all kinds of Google Fit, stuff like that to keep track and stuff. So I'll update you on how it goes. But again, I want to thank you very much for all your support. And this is a walk, this is a dedicated walk. Remind us. Yes, the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Okay. Disease. Yeah. Um, my roller derby team, originally we signed up to do it as a team. Yeah. And then each person do it, you know, raise their own money. But we're not going to go together because of COVID. And the walk is virtual now anyways, as other things have been. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Eric. Today is my mother's birthday. Today is your your mother's birthday. Well, happy birthday, mom. Good job. Okay. Ready for the last announcement? Okay, last chance. All right. I'm going to announce. I'm going to prepare the last announcement with just a brief story. Um. <coughs> When I lived in Berkeley, I attended a mostly African-American church periodically. Um, it was Downs Memorial United Methodist Church in Oakland. Um, and an elder statesman of this church was Bishop Nichols. He was the Methodist bishop for the Bay Area. He was a charming gentleman, had an amazing voice, spoke with unbelievable authority. And every time he preached, it was very, very special. And one time he told a story about a woman who had had 12 children. <clears throat> and the question came to her, how did you do this, A? And then the question at that time was, how did you love all these children equally? Did you love them all the same? And she said, yes, I loved them all the same, all the time, except that when one was, was ill, then I love that child a little bit extra. And I believe she also added, if one did especially well that day, then that one got a little special attention too. Okay, that is just, <clears throat> that's good parenting, it's good pastoring, and that is a lead in. <clears throat> uh, uh, to uh, honor a member of our congregation who's done especially well. Okay, so, so this, uh, this person gets a little extra loving, a little extra recognition today. Of course, we're all equal in the eyes of the Lord. Our, today's parable made that clear. <coughs> but some days, we all deserve a little special attention. So uh, Nancy McMinn, would you please step forward here? <coughs> we're going to thoroughly embarrass you and give you a, a token of our esteem, a little card, <coughs> the committee has thought long and hard about this, and we've decided you need a special award for all the communications work you do for the town, being the town crier and the village crier and our recorder, and occasionally nagger, but that's all. <laughs> that's, needs that. that's all part of the deal. Now, open this, open this thing. Well, I'm opening this too. I hope everybody has read Dottie Fatton's note that she put into the emus on Friday. If you haven't read it, do so. It's even better than usual. Yeah, her notes are always good, but sometimes they're better than others. Well, a little. We don't discuss money in public. It's just a big thank you and a little gift. <coughs> and I, I, I believe applause is in order. 
you too. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Keep up the good work. <coughs> Buy some sleep aid with that because you up to early in the morning. I went back to bed. Yeah, well, we should. Don't be videoing me to get up. Get up and go back to bed. Plus, I could be right up with you. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Receive the blessing. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.